Middle Ground is a social experiment that brings humans with opposing beliefs together. These discussions may contain viewpoints that are the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and to be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. Please see the humanity in each participant. And as always, we encourage empathy. You're equating some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you uh, my life an is unsupported... But why would you see um, my life is privileged, though? Why would, I, I mean, I don't say that about you. Why would you see my life is privileged? I'm, I'm privileged. Okay, that's fine, but why, why would you see my life is privileged? For one, you're a man. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. The government has no right to tell people what to do with their body. Vaccines. That's... Yeah, I don't think the government has the right to tell you what you want I'm to do with your... I'm going sorry. Okay. I stood here because of vaccines, but I know a lot of you guys probably look at me like, oh, what about abortion? Now, the thing is, when it comes to abortion, two bodies are involved. It's the woman and it's the fetus. The fetus you know, has a heartbeat, it has DNA, it should have rights. When? W life begins at conception. That's not when the heart's there. Though. Heartbeat starts at four weeks. It's not just a clump of cells, it is life. At 21 weeks, it can live outside of the womb. Abortion ends with murder and death. Over 90% of abortions happen within the first 10 weeks. That's still, I think that's not acceptable. But they still have the potential of having life though. The mortality rate of a fetus getting aborted is 100%. It's going to die when it's aborted. And you're very but, lucky you'll never have to experience what it's like to have to make that choice. Mm. But what if, I, what, if I, what if I become a father and, you know, the woman who I got pregnant you, wants to have an abortion? I, it's going to affect me. You would have a discussion with your partner then uh, and decide what you're going to do uh, and be glad that you have a choice of to, course, to but, even discuss with that partner. Unfortunately, human nature, if you take away the option or the right to do that, then they'll find it another way. And it will be unsafe. And uh, so would you support the mom? Would you support the mom in that scenario? If the mom had an abortion or the no, mom no, went... No, 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 if she gave birth. Oh, of course. I would support her. I'd say what you do is a good thing. And no, 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 no. Support her financially for the rest of her life or for the rest of the baby's life. Are you talking about like, what, what do you mean me support her? Like if as somebody, a citizen or... If somebody a, has a baby... There, we do have child support and it comes from taxpayer money. There's there, foster there. care, there's adoption, there's mothers waiting. Those systems are very broken and people all the time are trying to stop funding for programs like that. Now, I want to ask you guys, do you, do you support vaccine mandates? Yes. So, so I mean, you, you stepped forward and said the government shouldn't tell you what to do with your body though. Why, why would you support? My issue is, is that I believe that the government should not be able to tell me what to do with my body, but I have to accept the consequences for the choices that I make with my body. The vaccines, for instance, I absolutely felt that everyone should get vaccinated. Why? Because this was a pandemic. But if you don't want to, I don't think the government should have to tell you that you have to. But you then have to suffer the consequences of your choices, I'm which means you cannot in. patronize certain places. You can't put other people at risk. I know, I know you're saying they're doing it to protect us, and but the, the right coronavirus now. has, a, I think, a survivor of almost 98%, 99%, and we're mandating these vaccines. Why are we not mandating the flu? What's frightening to me is that you're equating some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you uh, assume my life is unsupported. Privileged? But why would you assume um, my life is privileged, though? You don't know my life. Why would, I, I mean, I don't say that about you. Why would you see my life is privileged? I'm, I'm privileged. Okay, that's fine. But why, why would you see my life is privileged? For one, you're a man. You know, most people commit suicide are men. Most people who work in dangerous workplaces are men. Most people who fight in war are men. And who set that system up? Men. Yeah. I'm going to ask the disagreeers to step forward. Well, I think I give a unique perspective on this because I actually do agree with the vaccine mandate. I think COVID was just a huge disaster, and I think it could have ended a lot sooner if things were more organized. Definitely. As far as whether the government should intervene on people's bodies, I think there are a lot of instances where the government should. One, to protect the society in general, especially in cases such as a pandemic where um, the disease could literally wipe out cities. In other instances as well, such as drug use, I think the government should intervene because when you have a society that's addicted to opioids or crack, it spreads like wildfire. And I've seen it firsthand. And it's very difficult to control without the help of government. Now on the topic of abortion, that one's you know, very complex. And in general, I always want to favor a woman's right to choose. But I think there's also a very fundamental question that both of you brought up is um, at what point is a fetus 
a human or a person. Let's say a, a child is eight months in the womb, and at that point, the baby has a heart, the baby has a brain, has legs, has arms. Do you think it's okay for that to be terminated? In your nobody opinion? is doing that, and nobody is having abortions with viable fetuses unless it is a medical emergency that will kill the baby and the mother. My name is Ben. I'm a business consultant for a telecom company, and I'm a liberal old dad. When it comes to the abortion issue, I am not exactly sure where I stand. I am not pro-choice or pro-life. My name is Dawn. I'm a regional sales manager for a dialysis company as well as a therapist, and I'm a liberal parent. As far as my views on abortion, to be honest, it just makes me very sad. Uh, I can't believe that we are moving backwards by taking people's rights away to choose what's happening to their body. Not being an LGBTQ plus ally makes someone a bad person. <laughs> it's strong, it's isn't a, it? It's right, a little it's a strong. general way it, to put it. I would question someone's empathy. That's it. And their awareness of the other people around them because I guarantee you, you know someone that's Absolutely. LGBTQ. Absolutely, and their environment. Right. Discussing the validity of the existence of other human beings <laughs> isn't a political issue. That's like... It's, it's there. That, there's like something wrong with yeah. you yes. if you like, no, trans people don't exist. Obviously they do. I would like to think that it's a safer world <laughs> yes. to be LGBTQ, but that yes. would be naive. Of course. People are getting murdered for being trans. Uh, you know, yes. and, it's, yes. and, and gay. It's scary. I have three kids. I have three boys. Oh. One of them is trans. I worry that, I mean, for however progressive uh, a new generation seems, that, um, you know, I have to think about, will there be violence done? Which, I mean, every parent worries about violence. That's part of the gig of being a parent. Yes. Um, and I've got an extra, I've got a, I've got a new layer. <laughs> My child is in a wonderfully privileged situation okay. where they have a lot of support. Okay, okay, that helps. But as they get older, as their get, circle gets as your wider. Circle gets wider, and you... my sphere of influence gets uh, yep. less effective as yes. they get older. You yeah. know. Hi, I'm Cindy. I am a stay-at-home mom, and I am a liberal parent. One of my children came out as trans two years ago. Mine and my husband's response was, that's great, would you like to go by these pronouns? And would you like to pick out a name? Let's uh, make sure that we talk to a gender specialist so we know what options there are, and we'll just take this one step at a time. We'll move forward with the best information possible. Can the disagree a step forward? I can provide a unique perspective on this because I'm actually bisexual. Um, so I think uh, not being an ally, as long as you're not harming people, you're not harassing people, you're not posting on social media that these people suck, then I don't think you're a bad person for that. Um, as a Christian, I don't think that being LGBTQ aligns with God's um, view of the family it doesn't mean that I will disrespect them in any way. I just think that it's a sin. As far as your faith is concerned, what would happen if your child came out to you that they were gay, bisexual, trans? I think that if the sin is not practiced upon, um, it's not a problem. It can be dealt with, especially with transitioning. It usually comes from mental problems like depression, anxiety, and all those things. So you think they can um, be kind of taught to not be gay? Uh, no, I think Pray the gay away. You support conversion therapy? No, I don't think that we can convert anyone into doing anything. I would not ostracize my child, but I would not support it. Just like I don't support any sin. So I, I, I think that if you want to be transgender, you could be transgender. We live in a, again, I said a free nation. But if you're asking for my opinion, I believe that men and women are completely different. We have different chromosomes, different bone structure. If you're, if you're a transgender woman, I still view you as a man. You could, you could, you know, express yourself as a woman. That's fine. But I don't believe that society should automatically, you know, say that okay, you are a woman. Let's say, for instance, there's a 18-year-old biological man, but says that they are a woman now. They still have male genitalia. They could walk into a woman's locker room and show off their male genitalia. 
I don't agree with that. I don't think that's okay. That's that's not happening. It is happening that's, though. Is, I, is it, it really it, happening? That is literally it's rare. transphobia. I think it it's it could it's happen not, though. It's and, rare and, though, and, but and not even a trans. It could just be a creepy guy, like pretending yes. to be. Yes, the, creepy guys yeah. are. I'm in much more danger in a women's restroom from yeah. a cis gender straight creepy guy I know, but than that, I am a trans person. That gives them the excuse, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. So, so do you support uh, gender neutral bathrooms, like women yes. and men can go into the same bathroom? Do you think that could increase the chances of, of rape or assault? They, they already exist. It's interesting it's that men are only concerned about this rape in the bathroom when we're t having a conversation about trans folk. But, but gender neutral bathrooms just stem from this idea though. No, this idea that rape is gonna suddenly go on the rise because of gender neutral bathrooms stems from transphobia. I'm Eden, I'm 16 years old and I'm on the conservative teen side. Um, I think that transitioning does more harm than good and um, I think that we are born in the body that we're given and we should stay that way. God has created us in his image and I don't think we should change the way we are. Owning a gun is a basic human right. Um, I hate, I absolutely hate hearing about school shootings on the news and just shootings in general. Um, it's horrible. You know, this isn't like, you know, Spider-Man's not gonna save people. People have the right to protect themselves. A lot of mass shooters target gun-free zones because they know there's not gonna be a person who's going to uh, fight against them or shoot them back. There's a lot of mass shootings in, at schools and that's because schools have gun-free zones. I view owning a gun as a right to defend myself. You look at countries that have banned guns in the past, the USSR, Nazi Germany, you look at China under Mao Zedong, they strip their citizens of arms so they could oppress them. And I think the reason why our founding fathers enshrine the Second Amendment is because they wanted us to protect ourselves against tyrannical government and to protect ourselves against danger around us too. I think that as a, from a woman's perspective, if as a woman you get into a dangerous situation, for example with a man, having a gun and knowing how to use a gun is the only way that will protect me. Having my tiny little pepper spray won't help me mm -hmm. forever. I think definitely if you uh, take away guns, the bad guys will always get their guns of one way course. or another. I, like, I, I live in Los Angeles and LA has strict gun control laws. This is my perspective of it. I think LA has become a more dangerous city and I feel very unsafe walking down the street just not armed. Crime is on the rise in America and I think one of the ways to stop crime is by owning a gun. I definitely think that there should be this control in place to who buys guns. You couldn't just be able to go to a store and buy a gun. There should be regulations into who buys guns and who um, shoots a gun. I actually debated whether or not I was going to sit down because I do believe people have the right to bear arms. I do. My issue is what kind of arms they're bearing. I believe people should get to go hunt. But do you need a semi-automatic rifle to do that? I, I, I'm, I'll tell you, personally, I'm afraid of guns personally myself, but I, um, I just think there need to be stricter regulations with it. But um, the majority of people who die by gunshot are women in a domestic violence situation. So mass shootings definitely don't want automatic rifles against that. Nobody needs them, but the most dangerous gun is the one in your home. I do want to ask you a question. Do you think that women should have the right to bear arms to protect themselves yes. against? Yeah, I never, I, I, I'm not against the right to own guns. The, the prompt was, do you think owning a gun is a human right? But do you think and I don't agree with that. In my perspective, I grew up in, in a gun riddled neighborhood. I myself am a gun owner now because of the fact that I had to create some type of means of self-defense. So why did you disagree? I disagree because I would prefer not to be. I think it's not a human right as much as almost a necessity for a lot of people. And, and not everyone. There's a lot of neighborhoods that are very safe, but even in a safe neighborhood, you can be robbed, you can be killed. I've been stuck up several times with a gun to my face, you know? And I, all I could think of is, man, if, if I die, it's gonna be because I didn't have a weapon to help protect me. Do you think that we should take away all guns from the entire world? Yes, if there was like a magnet, like Magneto from X-Men, and he just suck up all the guns, I think that would be such a better place. My political opinions have hurt my relationships with friends and family. <laughs> kind of. 
during 2020 when you know America got really like politically intense and my teacher she uh, was very politically active and she wanted us to you know speak our voices and they found out I was conservative and they said okay you're completely going against what we believe like the whole school is very liberal and they I guess they just kind of pushed me away did you feel like you would get bullied no after? I'll just get looks some people come up and say you're a racist or you're xenophobic you know they would tell me oh do you support Trump but I just brushed it off. I told them, hey, I respect that you think like this. Please respect me. I think that that is, um, whether or not we have the same ideas, I think that that is still an admirable quality. Yeah. Despite getting looks or feeling like maybe you don't belong, that you're still, um, you have your convictions. Yeah. So I, I can respect that you're convicted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think being liberal, we think of the right as being stuck in the sand. It's interesting to hear that liberals were not having his right opinion. I think that everyone should have their opinion. Well, I think we're talking about issues that aren't a matter of opinion, but mm. a matter of your morality, the value of human lives. I've had to personally block a few people on Facebook, family members, oh, wow. mostly men that are married to the women in my family. I'm like, hey, this conversation is really getting personal and hurtful. And if you carry on this way, I'm going to have to block you. Were they harassing you? Uh, I, I feel very harassed. Yeah, I'm belittled. Were you ostracized or was there someone um, that you... I think it, it, on my end, it was myself. I understand people have different beliefs and I respect that. And I think it's good for everyone to share their beliefs. Uh, that's the way we progress. But I think when people become ignorant or offensive consistently without any type of evidence or any type of backup behind that, that's the point where I say, you know what? I probably shouldn't be friends with you because you may smile in my face, but uh, behind my back, you, you have a different sentiment. I haven't lost any relationships because me and my friends don't really dive into politics. We kind of just play video games and, and talk about comics together. I think if you lose a relationship over politics, that's kind of sad. Unfortunately, it's a uh, part of growing up. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Hopefully you won't lose any friends, but usually as you get older, you start to see those divides a little clearer. I mean, you sometimes. guys are older than us. Was it like this going back now 20 years ago? Politics has changed so much, and I think you touched on it that now it's being associated, policy is being associated with ethics. I haven't lost any friendships or relationships because I won't allow that to happen. I believe that the majority of us, probably about 80%, are in the middle with varying degrees. And there are those people who are very, very conservative, very, very ultra liberal, who are the outliers. Well, I, I think it's subtle. Where you have somebody that you meet with on a regular basis, you talk with them, you have a good time. If topics get brought up, and, and it's, a, it's a, oh, okay you're one of those. They don't tell you that to your face, but it's kind of subtle. And also, I think with the prevalence of social media, people's opinions are a lot more out there. I never understood why anyone posted political opinions on social media. I think it's just annoying. Well, I have three kids. They know more about politics than I, I did know. when I was voting age. It's annoying, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's very encouraging because they're, they're, they're going to be more informed when they are of voting age. I mean, yeah, it just it makes life more divisive. I mean, there's more arguments and stuff and more, more relationships ending because politics is such a big part of life. Hi, my name is Scott. I am a uh, liberal parent. I have many children. I have four. My oldest daughter is extremely left-wing. My uh, two middle daughters are uh, roughly right in the middle there. And then Chase is conservative. My name is Chase. I'm 19 years old and I'm on the conservative teen side. My dad's Scott. We talk about politics, mostly uh, gun rights and the government in the economy. We disagree, but we, we like hearing each other's side. The feminist movement is overrated. The reason I sat down is because feminism as we know it in social media and the marches is generally run by white women and we don't have a lot of intersectionality. Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger. Yeah, yes. and um, Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony, you know, total racist. The women that headed up the uh, suffragette movement, they were not inclusive. Of course, yes. And they wanted rights for white women. That's true. And that thread has followed us to be very exclusionary 
to uh, black women, disabled women, women of color, indigenous women. I don't think that feminism in America is based off racism. The reason why there's more white feminists is because there's a higher white population in America. So generally there's gonna be more white feminists because of that. Hmm. I think that definitely in the beginning of feminism, feminists wanted uh, votes for women, that women would be allowed to work, would be allowed to go to universities and such. I definitely agree with that, but I think that feminism has gone too far into saying my body, my choice, and um, saying that women are not all equal, saying that women are being suppressed by white men and such things. Uh, no, uh, we got a long way to go. There's just not enough done. In America or just in the world in general? Well, America, for sure. The world in general is a heck of a lot worse than America. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I think that women should be able to do everything that men can, but we also have to protect ourselves. So if you want to be a stay-at-home mom and do one of the hardest jobs on the planet, you absolutely should be able to do that. But you should also discuss with your partner and put in things into place so that you're protected if you choose to do that. Some women aren't doing that, like life insurance and things like that. I think part of feminism is being able to take care of yourself. Capitalism is failing our society. This uh, system that just values production, consumerism, production, consumerism, until you die, doesn't work for anybody but a very, very, very small percentage of billionaires. And it's all, it's all baloney. The, the system is rigged to keep workers working and, and the rich just keep getting richer. Yeah, um, I think there could be some good in capitalism, which is like the innovation part mm -hmm. of it. But in general, capitalism definitely sucks uh, from the poor. There's a lot of industries that definitely shouldn't have any capitalism involved at all. The medical field, it's unjust that certain people get better care than other people just because they're more financially well off. Who are they to determine the value of life? The healthcare system creates such profit and that profit is created off the misery of others, of the illness of others, uh, including the um, prison system where you have jails that are privately owned because at oh, yeah. that point what you have is a hotel and you want to fill up the hotel. Why would there be a business that profits off of crime? That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. If you put profit ahead of people, people are going to suffer, obviously. So you said um, like only the billionaires succeed in capitalism. And I got to disagree with that because I like, I'm the CEO of my own company. A couple months ago, I started a jewelry company and it's, I'm not a billionaire, but it's been relatively successful enough to like, I can like make rent and, and go through college a bit. So I think there's people like me who own a small business who capitalism really benefits. If, mm. if capitalism isn't the solution, then what is the solution? Do you want to hear it? <laughs> Socialism. Socialism. So, so, the problem with democratic socialism, I mean, you talk about how capitalism hurts the middle class, but in reality, if democratic socialism was tried, the middle class are going to be paying way more taxes, not just the rich. You see, the rich don't pay taxes because they don't work. They make money off assets. The middle class, they work. And because they're working, they're going to pay more taxes under a proposal like Bernie Sanders or, I don't know, AOC or Ilhan Omar. I, I personally am okay with paying higher taxes. I would love people who make billions of dollars to pay their fair share of taxes. But increased taxes for a better situation for people overall, that is exactly what I stand for. I'm not sure that uh, socialism is the answer. Yugoslavia before World War II did okay, but they didn't do all that great, and they were taken over quite quickly. What I'm thinking is capitalism, although is not the best solution, is one of the best solutions for a democratic society. Think about socialism, you think about wealth distribution, and then money becomes a very big uh, role too, because the ones that have less money become envious of those that have more money. And then money is like, it becomes a god because you don't want anyone else to have that money but yourself. And if you, for example, look at the Scandinavian countries, they have a capitalistic market, but they have a socialist wealth distribution. And that's why it works over there. And I, I personally come from Europe, so I have seen that. So you think that works? A I, socialist? I personally don't think that works. I think it takes a lot of money from the rich and from the middle class. My name is Nathan, I'm 18 years old. I would like to ask the other side if they believe America is the greatest country in the world. If they disagree with that, I wanna know what country they believe is better than America. 
Um, I, I do believe it's a blessing and it's a privilege to live in a country that gives you the liberty and freedom and to express who you want to be. The American dream is dead. <laughs> I gotta... Uh, I gotta say I disagree with the phrase American dream and American dream uh, for, for who? You know, the Native Americans we slaughtered? Uh, the enslaved people? I mean, this, this romantic idea that there's this dream is just basically marketing for capitalism. You know, it's very, it's very well-funded propaganda and, and has it inspired good acts and good people to do good things? Of, of course, of course, because ultimately, in a large sense, humanity is, is good. But this idea of the American dream, I think, is, um, I, I think the fantasy of it is being torn apart a little bit. And I think that's actually exciting because it, it, it opens up room for something better, something more inclusive to grow. I think the phrase is kind of corny, but the idea that someone's like building themselves up in capitalism, I feel like that I kind of have done that a bit with my business. Um, so I don't think it's dead. I do think the American dream is dying though. You know, the American dream now is not the same as it was 30 years ago. Have a family, buy a home, have a great job, but now it's very difficult to buy a home. Income has not increased compared to the price of a house. You know, I do think it's dying though, but I don't think it's completely dead because there's a lot of immigrants who are still trying to come to America. America does have the highest immigrant population. 14% of our population are immigrants. We have a lot of people on our southern border and I think they all want to come to America. Yeah, I think the American dream still exists and I can speak firsthand because my family came from a third world country. Um, but so does the American nightmare. The people suffering, not just here, but also around the world due to policies, due to exploitation, due to colonization, due to a lot of issues that are directly at hand to America. So there's a lot of blood on the United States hand. And a lot of people don't want to leave their home country, but the situations that have been created there are forcing people to leave. Like my mother would have loved to stay in Mexico, but unfortunately due to poverty, which had a lot to do with NAFTA and what happened in 1994, directly caused by the United States, yeah. issues that created this migration. So is it a better opportunity here? Yes, my people come here and we send our money back to our ancestors. Would we just like to stay where we're from? Yeah, that would be a much better option. As an immigrant myself, I definitely think that the American dream still exists. We long for the opportunities that people have here in America for the job opportunities that people have, the innovations that are available in this free market economy, this capitalist country. So, so the American dream is in the eye of the beholder. If you're an immigrant or if you live here, it's different. It's going to be different. I don't like the idea of the American dream, but I am a person who's still going to always believe in hope. If you work hard and you take advantage of opportunities, you can make a difference in your life. I mean, you're an example of it. I'm so amazed by you. I think it's awesome what you're doing um, at such a young age. I am very, very impressed with you three. My hope for you is that you stay open-minded and that you're always willing to be learners and not just listeners. Yeah. So. All right, great. Good lawyer someday, Nathan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>